Okay, everyone, uh, welcome. Um, story, a little bit of a late start here. I got some trades on. As as you guys know, I'm also a money manager, and I have. Uh, oh, there we go. I got one order filled, <laughs> and um, I got to watch. Uh, got to watch the market occasionally. Make sure that uh, everything is working okay. So I apologize. I'm going to do two things at once. And, and uh, uh, it's actually on uh, the Russell. Uh, so I also trade uh, currencies. I also trade the um, uh, indexes as well as the currencies. But uh, the indexes are, are are rocketing right now. And um, I just took a short on the Russell. Uh, nice liquidity run. We just took out some liquidity up at 49.5. So I think we're probably uh, fade the move here and come back down. If not, there's another higher target. So uh, I apologize, you guys. Apologize, you guys. Uh, uh, sometimes I got to do two things at once. But let's get start with the with the webinar. All right. Okay, let me just get this webinar up and running here, and then I'll start my screen. Okay, um, just going to get this camera rocking and rolling here. So, trying trader. Yeah, it's just a fade of liquidity run on the Russell. Okay, so everyone can see my screen. And let me just do one other thing here. I apologize. I'll be with you guys real soon. Okay. There we go. Wow. The trade's working for me very nicely. Beautiful trade here. I'm already up a full point on it. Okay. Making sense of the news and profiting from it by Steve Patterson. That's me. Um, for any of you guys that don't know me yet, um, I guess, let me get this disclaimer out of the way here. Um, don't trade with money you can't lose, yada, yada, yada. Follow the rules. I'm not a certified investment advisor, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so let's start off. Uh, for any of you that are not familiar with me, um, 27 years experience in industry, currently an individual retail trader. Trade my own account. I do private coaching. All right. Now, getting right in. Hold on. Somebody just PM'd me here. Um, can you guys see the screen? Somebody said they can't see the screen. Can you guys see the screen? Okay. Uh, Linda, they say they can see the screen. Okay, great. Okay. I get a lot of people ask me a lot of questions as a trader. A lot of times I get all these crazy questions, especially by people that, you know, when I get questions out in public or when I'm at a restaurant or I'm at a social event and somebody asks me a question, um, then I, um, you know, I, I, I don't mind it. But when I get traders asking me questions, um, it really, it, it, since I've kind of come on FX Street and a lot of people will, will send me a private message and they'll say, you know, what do I think of uh, Merkel? What do I think Merkel's going to say? What do I think um, is going to happen after the Fed report? What do I think is going to happen after this report? Yada, yada, yada. And I think this is, um, a really bad flaw. Ooh, my Russell trade's working out really nice, guys. I think this is a really bad flaw that um, traders fall into. And hopefully you guys in the room will pick up something here and, you know, not do it. Because <clears throat> um, I'm a firm believer that, like, thoughts are things. I don't know if anybody's ever heard that before. I don't want to get too esoteric on everybody. But when you have a thought, um, it becomes something. And I don't know if this has happened to any of you guys. You can let me know if it has. By the way, for anybody that hasn't been to one of my seminars, I kind of like to do this as a lecture type series. And so please understand, I'm not here 
to really teach you one specific thing. Um, my, I find it best if I just keep talking and over the course of doing hopefully several seminar, seven seminars um, with, um, with FX Street, you guys will kind of pick up on the thought process. So I'm not going to say, sit here and say, okay, um, you know, this is what you should do, this is what you shouldn't do. So I'm just going to kind of share like a university education. Um, so anyways, get it going forward. I don't know if this has ever happened to any of you guys. You can tell me this, but have you ever watched the news and somebody maybe that you respected or somebody that you, you thought very highly of or something like that came out and said that, um, you know, uh, the index was going to do something or a stock was going to do something. And then later on, when you've been trading it later on, whatever, whatever the instrument is or a currency, whatever, and, um, you've had that thought in your brain and it's in your mind, right? So all of a sudden, you know, uh, Joe Blow said, um, you know, the, the euro was going to go to whatever, and it could be somebody even in the chat room or a forum, right? Has that happened to anybody here? Right? And then later on, you've been trading it, and you've had that thought in your mind, and it's allowed you to make a bias of what's going to happen. Oops, sorry, guys. Hey, my trade's up 700 bucks. Yahoo. I'm going to close this trade right now. Sorry. And I'm going to take my profit. Done deal. Um, nice trade. Like that. G good day. Um, so if that's ever happened, now I can give you guys my full attention. I, I apologize for that. Um, if that's ever happened to you guys, you're not alone. Okay? And so for that reason, I really try to avoid um, hearing opinions okay and, and here i have opinions are like and everybody knows what the swear word is there everyone's got one uh, i just give you a clue uh the first letters of capital a right and i learned a long time ago that when i started listening to opinions or when i started watching the news and when i started um hearing what people were saying in forums i would get my butt handed to me Okay, because I couldn't help but get that thought and belief out of my mind. And so one of the things I really want to encourage you to do is how to look at the news without having an opinion. Now, how the hell do you do that? Oops, sorry. Apologize. Beep, beep that. How the heck do you do that? You're not allowed to swear on FX Street, by the way. Um, otherwise, I, I curse all the time. Um, Otherwise, how do you come up with an opinion, right? Or how do you watch the news and not allow it to affect your trading, right? Because if we pop up, um, let me just continue here. Okay. <clears throat> um, that gets a bit too further. If I pop up uh, Forex Street, or sorry, I apologize. Um, uh, any economic calendar, and I look at the calendar, there's at least, what, 70 reports a week, right? And so I find that a lot of traders get really messed up, and just please hear me on this. Do not form an opinion on it, okay? I have my own personal opinion about lots of things in life, but what I don't do is I don't allow the news to basically influence anything that I'm going to do other than the fact of it being a catalyst. So when I pop up uh, on the news calendar and I'm looking at the news calendar, I don't even read what the actual news is about or what it's going to be about, right? Um, there was a good book written a long time ago that I that I did read um, and Secrets of Economic Indicators. And it was a really, really good book by a really smart guy that basically told you how you can decipher uh, all the various economic indicators. I can't remember what his name is right now, but it's a, it's a good book. And I actually read the book, and 
I thought this is really great stuff because you know now I can actually understand what this what the news is actually meaning because for many years I I really didn't have really uh I had my opinions on things but I didn't really understand what every news release was about nor did I care to because I think I think as a trader what we want to do is we want to look at the news and we want to be able to understand that this is just an excuse okay and what do I mean by this well um, there's a reason why um, Goldman Sachs Bank of America uh, Citibank um, the largest hedge funds in the world there's a reason why they hire Harvard MBAs okay and it's not because they're they're um, Harvard MBAs per se or Yale MBAs but because they're really really smart people okay so what large institutions do is I don't believe that the market is rigged where you've got government uh, agents that are being paid off or you have um, you know people on the inside or I, I'm not a big believer in conspiracies right what I what I do believe though is I do believe that it's very easy to duplicate information so if I was going to if I wanted to figure out um, a particular news release and I had a team of very smart people working for me then I could probably duplicate that study and I could figure it out you know a lot of people believe the market is corrupt and so do I but I don't believe it's corrupt in the same way that a lot of people a lot of people believe I just believe that that they if you've got enough money and you can hire enough intelligent people well then you can figure out things quite easily right so that's what large institutions do so <clears throat> uh, we don't have that luxury and so we cannot and even if we did have that luxury we 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 couldn't build a scenario now early in trading the in trading news releases um one of the ways that because even if you know the news release you don't know how the market's going to react to it right but the majority of times if the news is a positive surprise the market reacts favorably if the news is a negative surprise it reacts negatively right so um, in early in my news news trading career what I did was I said okay if the news is good then um, then this is what I'm gonna do and then if the news is bad this is what I'm gonna do right and so that kind of got me on the right track so that's the very first thing let me just continue here with my slides what can we do here this is this isn't really me but <laughs> uh, could have could have been me many many years ago it's old monitors here I don't my I have a partner and he makes these slides for me is it here okay so what can we do to develop a plan to trade around the catalyst right so every morning when I wake up um, when I look at whatever news releases are coming out um, the way I look at it is like Christmas. Darn, this Russell's dropping like a stone still. You guys owe me a lot of money. I just left seven hundred more dollars on the table here. <laughs> I hope you. I hope you guys appreciate these seminars. I, I short the Russell at uh, eight forty nine fifty, and it's eight forty seven right now. I had a ton of contracts on too. Um, I could have got an extra three pips out of uh, three points out of that. Yeah, I should have left the runner. If Boyke, if I didn't have, if I wasn't doing the seminar, I would have. Um, uh, so, anyways, um, one of the very first things I want you to do when you pop up, whatever. Let me let me go to FX Street's calendar here. I'm going to put this on the screen here. By the way, can you guys see? I just put something else on the screen. Um, can you see the other thing? or uh can you see the other web page or can you only see the um the slideshow 
I guess you can't see that. Okay, I, I think I got to start it and restart, re, restart it and start it. Stop it here. One second. I'm just going to go to FX Street and look at the look at the calendar and pop it up. News. Okay, so one of the things that I do when I'm looking at a calendar of the news is to me it's like Christmas, right? I go, oh boy. What news is coming out? This is great because this is this is where I'm gonna this is where I'm gonna make my money. Back in the day, they taught you never trade the news. You can't trade the forex market with the news because there's all kinds of slippage, and you get your butt handed to you, right? Um, let me just get FX Street up here. Looking for the calendar. Maybe somebody could post a link in here. For some reason, I can't find the link to the FX Street uh, calendar here. I don't want to say anything, but I, I use another one. Shh, don't tell anybody. Um, but when I pop up, the, uh, thank you very much, Cyril. Thank you very much. Okay, there we go. So when I pop up the news, I'm going to just time this out, right? And I'm going to start out with FX Street. I'm looking at what what what's coming up and how can i trade around it okay now let's go and actually take a look at um some actual trades here and there was an actual beautiful trade today as well too that um there's a great example of how we can trade around the news so one of the first things i want you to do is not care what the darn news is okay we don't care what the actual news is if you want to go and read it so you can be really smart and impress your friends at the next dinner party um great okay but the first thing i'm going to i'm going to suggest that you do is i'm going to suggest that you not care about what the news is now there's another competitive website that i'm not going to suggest here that that also uh, and and that also limits or tells you um, the importance of each news release right okay so that's also very important to know and we'll see here uh, let's just take a look here I apologize guys today we had let me just pop my charts up here I'm having some technical problems with my charts. Dot off this. Let me start this. Let me know when you guys can see my chart. Okay. Excellent. Oh my gosh, I got screens popping up all over the place, left, right, and center. Okay, so we had a news release out this morning, okay? So when I came into this morning and I saw this news release that was coming out, um, basically what I wanted to do was I wanted to say, okay, how can a news release move the market? Or where could this news release move the market? Now, today was really super easy. It was like taking candy from a baby. For anybody that watched my last, um, uh, video on FX Street. Um, basically, what I told you to do is come in, pop up a five-minute chart, and follow whatever has happened during the Asian and London sessions. Okay. So anybody that would have came in would have seen that basically Asia and London dropped like a stone on the euro. So there's only one direction you should have been looking to trade if you were to follow that particular style of trading, which I think is extremely profitable, okay? And that would have been to the short side. So when I came in, um, obviously, we were looking for some shorts. Now, for anybody else that knows my style of trading, I'm also one that is a liquidity hunter. And this brings up another really, really interesting question that I get from a lot of people. One of uh, the guys on FX Street, Romano, I think it was, I don't know if you're in the room, uh, Romano, but um, he um, 
he asked me a question the other day and he said to me, and this is something for any of you that also trade liquidity. Um, you no, know, he said to me, what do I think of the Japanese yen? Oh, sorry, the Aussie dollar, I apologize. And it was at a time when there was absolutely nothing happening. So he had drawn out all of these areas where he thought there was liquidity or support and resistance. And, you know, for those of you that don't know, so support and resistance trading is very, very similar to liquidity trading. It's not that different, um, except that um, it um, it doesn't use necessarily um, historical price levels the same way it does. But coming into today, um, when do I know that a liquidity run could happen? Well, once again, getting back to my slide where large institutions have the manpower to figure things out before they happen, right? What actually happens is they use the news as an excuse. Okay? So, if I had the manpower, and if I knew a report was going to be positive or negative for whatever pair that I was using, and if I also knew what the order book looked like, I could take advantage of that news release to cause some panic. All right, and take advantage of that news to release to do a liquidity run, right? So sometimes liquidity runs happen during news, and sometimes uh, they 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 don't happen during news. But I found in my personal experiences that the majority of them happen. Probably 65% happen after a news release. Okay, so here we have an example where we were looking. Um, Alex, you'd have to go back and watch my first video, okay? Okay. Um, basically, a liquidity run is is stops being taken out or, or or market orders being taken out. So we have the market coming down here now. Just just one of the things I want you to keep in mind from my from um, from my last webinar. Um, what I talked about in my last webinar is how to follow the Asian and um, uh, what do you call it Euro session. So here we had in the in the uh, in the Euro session we had the market selling off, pulling back, selling off, and then we pulled back, pulled back, and then came up, did a little liquidity run here, and then bam, this was a big liquidity run right here. Okay. I know this was a liquidity run because I can take a look at the size of these five minute bars and I can see that's not anything but either A, a lack of orders in here, which is basically the same thing as a liquidity run at the end of the day. Um, and I can see that the size of the bars on the downside um, versus the size of the bars on the upside are two different things. So coming into today, uh, we had this big congestion area, right, where the market, um, where the market kind of uh, chopped around during the later later half of the of the London session, and we got this up move here where we took out whatever liquidity was left here, and then right after the report, basically, um, it was just a boom, and what you have here is you have about from from this level here down to here, you've got 30 pips. Now that's a beautiful way, that's a beautiful uh, number for a liquidity run because you've got to remember, the, the Forex market is not easy to move. Um, so a lot of times people look too far out for, um, for areas of support and resistance. If you're going to move the Forex market 30 pips, you're going to have to have a lot of money behind you and you're going to have to have some momentum or some type of excuse behind you. So moving the market 30 pips uh, to take out these lows, which we ultimately did, right? Um, then um, this is how the news. Re this is how that particular news release this morning was used in order to go out, take out these lows, and then ultimately the market has rallied up again, 
and uh, we're back at this back at this area. Okay. Now, what would you rather trade? Would you rather trade this chop and slop, or would you rather trade fast action where you get into results? Okay. The reason why I trade around news and I trade liquidity runs around news is because I want fast results. You'll see that trade that I just took um, lasted all of what? Seven minutes? My average trade when I'm day trading, I will either almost, almost, I want instant gratification. When I take a trade, if I don't get instant gratification on it, then I'm not a happy camper. I, there's nothing I hate worse in the world than sitting in a trade and waiting for a trade to happen without any type of reason for it to happen. So probably if you took a look at every single trade that I take, uh, day trading, the majority of them, even though I don't trade around news a lot of the time, the majority of my trades are around news events. So how can we prepare for a news event? Okay. Let's go and actually take a look at the calendar and see, um, and take a look and see how we could have prepared for various news events. Okay. So looking at today at 3.30 a.m., uh, 3.30 a.m., we had, uh, the German flash manufacturing PMI coming out, right? And so that 3.30 would have been on my chart. It's 3.30 a.m. my time. So that's an hour and a half into London. So you're looking at, here's the London Open, right? You're talking about an hour and a half. 7, 8.30, around here. So correct me if I'm wrong, but um, this is about that time when that report came out, right? Am I right on that, guys? Right around here? Okay. So preparing for a report, um, what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to, A, look at what the market has been doing, number one, right? And then number two, you want to look for the market to do, to continue to do what it has been doing as long as the report is not a big surprise. And if the report is a positive surprise, you want to be able to trade with that positive surprise in the direction that you're going to get in the context of what the market has been doing. And if the report is a negative surprise, then of course you want to be looking for um, for for a negative reaction. So in this particular case, when the report came out on the euro, it was actually positive uh, this morning, and the market did sell off and then bounced right up. And guess what? We took out uh, some of the liquidity that was up here, and then the market just tanked again, right? So again. Preparing for a report, one of the things I will do is, let's say there was a report coming out right now, is I would go and I take a look at my one-hour charts. Well, first thing I do is take a look at my daily chart, right? And I'd say, okay, there's a big report coming out. Are there any key levels that I want to trade around, All right? And um, I would look for those particular daily levels. So I didn't see anything on my daily levels. I'd go down to my one-hour and then I would, um, I'd say on my one hour, what are the key levels that I want to be trading around, right? And by the way, these are some reports that I marked off. I'll go back and do those in a few moments, okay? Uh, and then I would say, okay, um, where are those levels that I want to be exploiting, all right? And so, again, the trick is not to read the report. When I read any news, I'm looking at mostly the headlines and I'm looking and saying to myself, is this positive or is this negative? Because once again, getting back to thoughts are things, 
when you put that thought in your idea, when you put that idea in your mind, okay, I think the economy sucks. Okay, I was talking with this girl the other day, and I was explaining to her how I believe that the S&P 500 is going to have a 700-point drop. I believe the market's going to have one of the biggest uh, crashes in the next uh, coming this winter and coming this year. Now, I have my opinion on that, okay? And that's based upon just my opinion, right? But there's a major difference because even though it's my opinion that the market is going to have a stock market, that is, by the way, guys, is going to have a major, major, major correction in the next year, that's just my opinion. But I'm not going to trade around that opinion. Because the second that I start trading around that opinion, then I'm going to have some serious problems. It's going to influence every single decision that I make. And especially when you have a long-term opinion like that, where you think the market's going to have a major correction. Um, and by the way, I, I, I've only felt that way in uh, 27 years of trading. I've only felt that way um three other times where I believe the market was going to have a major correction. And those three other times was right after I watched the 1987 correction. And two of those other times I was right. But I'm not telling you that because I don't want you to hear my opinion. This will be a good test for you. Even though I'm telling you guys I believe the market's going to have a major major correction, don't listen to me. Don't listen to me. Trade around the news that comes out and trade around what you're actually seeing. Now, we've all read the books, Trade What You See. We've heard that a million freaking times, right? Everybody, trade what you see. Trade what you see. Well, again, people don't understand what that actually means. So let's get to some context here. These are some news releases that came out. And I marked them off here. I don't remember what they were. But here's an example on a one-hour chart. Okay. Um, where the market had this big giant rally up, right? And a news release was coming out. Okay. And so here's a situation where um, there wasn't really anything for me to exploit because by the time the news release came out, the market had moved far enough that I couldn't really exploit a support and resistance level, could I? Right or a liquidity level. This is some liquidity up here because we've gone too far. And what was I going to get on this? A measly what? Um, maybe if I was lucky here, 20 ticks, which wouldn't have been mad, right? But right after that news release came out, the market just continued to rally and continued to go higher until it pulled back and grab some liquidity down here and then ran and ran further. So, how do you how do you exploit various conditions? Well, in a market like this where we were in for a long time, this was really easy. In this type of trading environment where we have a back and forth market, back and forth market, and news releases were coming out in this type of market environment, then this would be something where you could fade a news release right and so um, a liquidity run down to here and some news release you could fade that because you've got a back and forth choppy market okay but when the market stops doing this type of behavior how do you exploit news releases then right you have to you have to change your game plan right you have to change the game plan because this type of market is very different than this previous market envir environment that we're in. Okay, so let me quantify things here. When you look at the news, don't read it, don't care what's going to happen. I, you know, for for the longest time, like people would always ask me, what do I think about QE3? Well, if I told you guys the honest truth, you'd all think I'm a freaking idiot because I don't really even have that much of an idea other than a basic fundamental of what what 
QE3 really actually is. I, I mean, I don't really care what QE3 is, right? Or QE2 or QE1 or whatever. I don't really care what's actually happening. Like, I don't care what happens with this election uh, coming up in November, but I do know that when you have a lot of news releases and press going on and about any particular news event, then it gains a lot of power. So when everybody was talking about uh, QE3, the only reason I was paying any attention to anything, and people were asking me all kinds of stuff about it, what do I think is going to happen here, what do I think the German court's going to do, what do I think is going to happen, I try and avoid that like the plague. Because I don't even want to know what's going on, right? I don't want to know the details. Because all I want to do is be able to exploit the event, okay? And so I'm going to exploit the event with having if-then scenarios, right? So on a, a trade like this, where I have a news release coming out, I can come up with a with an if then scenario. I can say, okay, if the news release is positive in this particular context, where I've got a strong market going into it, then there is not going to be a lot of resistance above. Okay, and anybody that's going to be selling into this area here is going to get their butt handed to them. So on a trade like this, rather than just grabbing the um well that's a pretty big trade actually. Um no it wasn't it wasn't much there. Seven pips. One sec. When just grabbing ten pips here, this would be a trade where in this context, if the news release that came out was positive, that a trader could have held on to that trade a little bit longer. Okay, and I'm not going to tell you where to get out or where to get in. Okay, or how to trade it, all right? Because that's that's entirely up to you, all right? Um, I am going to tell you that I didn't know what that particular news release was, but I do know that in that context, I wouldn't have just taken 10 pips. I would have held for a bit longer. I probably would have held for the first black one-hour candle, to be honest with you, okay? And there's, a, there's another one here I wanted to show you. The market continues to rally up, okay? And again, we get another news release. And again, this this news release might have only given you um, 29 pips, which wouldn't have been bad, but you could have held on to this to this for about 75 pips, okay? Versus today, which is a different type of scenario, right? Versus today, where we have a market that isn't as ballistic as this particular market. We have a market that's coming off. On a day like today, the news release that came out today would have been much better just to take take a, a make it make it take it type of trade. And in actuality it faded up here and you know ended up coming back up. Now um, the point I'm trying to make is threefold. First of all, don't read the news because the second you start reading it you form opinions the second you have an opinion you're dead okay uh, mark douglas in his book and always says you know, trade what you see um, be subjective be objective that's a bunch of hogwash all right it's impossible for a human being to not have an opinion so my best advice to you is don't even learn, if you want to be a trader, don't even learn about QE3 or 4. Don't even, I, don't even want to, I don't even want to know about it because it's going to for, cause me to have uh, lose my objectivity. Now, some of you might be better than me at staying objective, but I found that it's almost impossible as a human being to remain objective when you have opinions, no, no, Mark Douglas' work is good. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is, it's, it's. Um, I like Mark Douglas. His his work is fantastic. What I'm saying is that um, 
by by um I lost my train of thought now, Ennis. You got me all you got me all flustered here. By by um by staying objective, you cannot remain objective with with an opinion, is what I'm trying to say. Exactly. We should all be ostriches with our heads in the sand. If we're going to be traitors. Okay? If we're going to be traitors. Boyke, I have my opinion what's going to happen to the U.S. economy. Okay? I have my opinion what's going to happen to the stock market. I have my opinion what's going to happen to currencies. But I leave that for the parties. I leave it so that I can impress the girls about at a bar. Or I can... I can impress uh, one of my clients who calls me up and says, what's going to happen? And I say, well, you know what? Here's what I think could happen. And and this is my opinion of what I think is going to happen. And here's the reasoning why that I why I have those opinions. Okay. But when it comes to trading, what we have to do is just use that news as a catalyst. Okay. And I would even go so far in the beginning when you're trading around the news is to not even say what's a positive situation, what's a negative situation, and how do I trade trade around that. I'm going to challenge you all, and some of you have taken me up on my challenges and had good results with it. For the next week to my next seminar, uh, seminar that I do here on FX Street, we come back, we visit it again. But I want you to just highlight all the big news releases. Okay? Don't read them. Just see whether or not they're important or if they're not important. And then all I want you to do is just take support and resistance levels on a one hour chart around those news releases. Okay? And then I want you to take the context of the market that you're in. And I want you to, um, I want you to trade in the direction of the context of the market that you're in. Simple as that. So if you didn't understand that, it's being recorded, and you can go back and listen to it. Okay. Look at the major news releases that are coming up. Look at the market. Don't care about what the news release actually is. All right. Don't care about anything except for the context that the market is currently in, and then try to figure out a way how to exploit that. Okay, and I'll, I'll, like I said, I just gave an example. Do I have to be off right at quarter two, Vicky, or um, uh, Maud, if you're here? Do I have to be right off at quarter two? Is there somebody behind me? Does anybody know if anybody's behind me? Is there a seminar behind me? Top of the next hour. Oh, Sam. Oh, good. I'm going to hang around for that seminar. I like Sam. I think he's a smart guy. I watched some of his stuff on uh, FX Street. He, he has some pretty good stuff. Um, so I'm going to hang around for that one. Um, so, does everybody understand, before I leave, does everybody understand the exercise? Do you have any questions on the exercise? The exercise is just watch the news, draw off major support and resistance levels, okay? Don't care about what the news is. Don't even read it after it comes out. Just trade in the direction of the bias of that news release. Okay? If you do that, if you did nothing but that, I promise you all you'll be profitable traders in, in, in six months from now. Just by doing that, just by following that simple piece of advice there. I, I, I can almost guarantee it if you did it right. Okay? And then, and then don't trade except for around those major news releases. It can be one, it can be three, it can be whatever. Okay, sometimes sometimes uh sometimes you you can do that. Okay. 
So for example, today, I'll just go through real quickly because i got to get off here. Sam's coming on behind me. Um, for example, today, this would have been a very good example. Here is the news release coming out today. The context was the market was down. I would have drawn off any level that I would have seen that would be significant. Okay? Any level that I would have seen that would have been significant. Okay? And obviously, I would have been looking for shorts. Okay, now if you want some type of confirmation, use any type of reversal candle or any type of continuation candle. Okay, in this particular case, there's the news, bam, a nice candle here, get short and you're out. Bingo, bango, bongo. Okay, if the news would have popped the market up to here, I would have waited for some type of black candle up here to get short. Okay. Because all I would have, all I would have wanted to be doing is trading in the context of everything that's going on here. Okay, and I'm trading around the news in the context of what's going on here. Now, the one caveat I will tell you, wait for confirmation. Don't go in blind. Otherwise, you get your butt handed to you. So wait for some type of candle where you can get some type of accurate stop loss on. Okay? Please listen to me on that. That's very important you hear me on that one point. Wait for some type of confirmation. Okay, so the context is, see what the market's doing, wait for the news, draw off major levels, trade in the direction of the context. If this market was choppy back and forth, and the news came out back here, and the market was like this, I could have taken this long. But the market was in a very strong downtrend. Okay? All right, I can't. I don't. I got to go here um, because uh, somebody's coming in behind me. And so, for um, any of you that um, would like to get a hold of me, um, my information is right here. You can email me, phone me, or Skype me, and um, that's it. Any questions before I wrap it up? No questions. Hope everybody enjoyed it. And once again, all of my stuff is like a lecture series. Come back next week and you'll learn more. I apologize if I'm vague about um, about some topics. But like I said, it's more of a process. I don't want to give you um, anything other than other than lectures that will help you grow overall as a trader. All right? Bye for now. Thanks again. Have a great day.